Welcome to Over and Out uh, with me, Saadi Reza and Ahmed Khwaja here for uh, Dawn News English. We're reviewing here on June 4th, the T20 World Cup. Uh, three matches to review yesterday, Afghanistan and Uganda. And then today, the England-Scotland game, which was washed down. Of course, the um, Nepal and Netherlands game just up the road here in Dallas. So let's start with yesterday. Uh, a pretty emphatic victory for Afghanistan, um, 183 for five they made and bundled Uganda out for 58. I think the key thing to me here is, and we mentioned this in our preview, is that uh, that that opening pair of uh, Gurbaz and Zadran, they put on 154, they had 66 runs in the power play, and they really set the platform for Afghanistan. Absolutely, if the Afghan batting, especially the top order batting in this T20 World Cup, if it scores consistently, then I think they can challenge any side in the tournament with their fast bowling and spin resources. Rashid Khan, Noor Ahmed, Mujibur Rahman, then you have Fazlul Lak Faruqi, who bowled beautifully as well, getting that late swing and completely dismantling the Ugandan batting order. As long as the top three make those runs consistently, I think Afghanistan have a very strong chance of going deep in this T20 World Cup. Yeah, they have a tricky group, but I, I actually think um, it's New Zealand and West Indies who have to worry in, in that group. I think Afghanistan will probably qualify. And of course, Faruqi took five wickets. Coming to today's matches, England, uh, Scotland, it was uh, rained out, so a point apiece. Although I was impressed with the, the Scottish batting. You know, they they um, scored at nine runs and over. They ended up with, I think, 91 off 10. England had to chase with Duck, Duckworth Lewis, 109. Uh, I did think there was some pauses for England. I thought in the, the last couple of overs, uh, I thought uh, Moin um, bowled well and Adil Rashid, his, second, uh, his last over, uh, bowled well. He got hit in his, in his penultimate over, but in his last over, he bowled well. Well, absolutely. I think uh, Michael Jones, the opener, the young opener for Scotland, he plays for Durham. <clears throat> In the English County Championship, very, very impressive. We know about George Muncy. He's been around for a while since the 2015 ODI World Cup, if I'm not wrong. Very seasoned veteran of the Scottish side. But Michael Jones was very impressive. He's played some classy shots off the back foot. He has that power game down the ground as well. Very impressed with him. And what I liked was the bravery and the intent with which the Scots played. They were not in awe of the English players at all. And 109 in the allotted 10 overs, if Josh Butler had fallen early... Who knows, could have been a very different game. But of course, it's all academic now. I was struck with some of those reverse slog sweeps that uh, for sixes that the Scots had because you you don't see those those shots being played by the Pakistani batters. Yeah, we don't play any unorthodox cricket at all. We don't have that game, a square of the wicket on the onside or the offside. But George Muncy, he's known as a bit of a sweep specialist. But that reverse, first he hit for four, then hit for six against Adil Rashid when the wall was going to be pitching well outside leg. Those were two remarkable shots. And that's the kind of unorthodox game that our coaching does not inculcate in our batters at that age level. We certainly, all we have is that cow corner, square leg, try to slog on the onside. We need to develop more well-rounded batters and unorthodox batters if they are to succeed at World Cup level. In fairness, though, some of that bravery comes from when you know that you have a secure spot in your team, which is not always something that uh, we can take for granted. Last game, just up the road, the Dutch played uh, Nepal and a fantastic crowd for by the uh, uh, in Dallas. The uh, Nepali community here really turned out. Um, in the end, the Dutch sort of uh, uh, romped home easily. They, they played slow. They took it up to the 19th over. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. We talked about Sri Lanka yesterday. I think they're in deep trouble because I think this Dutch team could qualify alongside uh, South Africa. I don't think uh, Bangladesh will, but I, I think the Dutch team, they could they could beat uh, Sri Lanka and, and come through. Well, 100%. I think the Dutch will fancy themselves against Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and South Africa. They have... The base is covered. They have decent seam bowling. They have a good spinner as well in there in the in the mix as well in Tim Pringle. He bowled beautifully today, and they have a very, if I wouldn't say dashing top order, but they're certainly very experienced. They know how to play according to the match situation. And I felt bad for the Nepalese fans who turned out in huge numbers in Dallas. I think it was at least six and a half, seven thousand strong. The crowd this morning in Dallas. They got the worst of the conditions. First of all, when they lost the toss and they were invited to bat first. It was very cloudy. There had just been some sprinkling of uh, rain in the air. The pitch was doing a lot, a lot of swing and seam. And even Tim Pringle was getting a lot of bite and turn off the wicket. And when in the run chase, after that initial torrent that they needed to weather off, Max O'Dowd really played well for the Netherlands. In the second half of the inning, the sun came out and it became a pretty flat wicket. And then the Nepalese, even though they kept chipping away, 
never really had a chance at the game. So we've had rains and storms here for the last few days, but Thursday's forecast looks good. It looks to be a nice baking hot day for the Pakistan USA game. Quickly touching on tomorrow, India's uh, um, debut in this World Cup. They play Ireland. Uh, to me, what I'm looking for is who their opening partnership is going to be. Is it going to be Kohli who starts with Rohit? And then I'd love to see what Bumrah and those guys do on this pitch. Well, I think their bowling, their fast bowling is a little light to say the least with no Mohammad Shami as well. So, Mohammad Siraj is very erratic in T20s. Arshdeep is okay, but he's not got that pace he had in the past. So, certainly Jaspreet Bumrah will have to carry the bowling on his back. I think it's very likely that we see two spinners in the form of, in fact, uh, yes, two spinners in the form of Ravi Jadeja and of course, Kuldeep Yadav mm-hmm. will definitely play. They could might even think about playing three spinners with Yuzvain the Chahal in the mix as well against the Irish. You don't expect them to be that strong versus wrist spin. But like you mentioned, that top order quandary, who's going to come in to open if they get Virat Kohli to open with Rohit Sharma? Will Sanju Samson slot in at three or will they just stick to the regular combination of Jaiswal, Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli slotted in at three? Then you have Sanju Samson, Rishabh Pant. Then very likely Hardik Pandya will be in at six. And so India is a well-rounded side. The batting certainly has firepower. But do they play with intent? Will they, will they show that bravery or will they go back into their shells as they usually do in these ICC tournaments and they look to play for their averages and for their stats? Can they play that fearless brand of T20 batting that we see from the likes of the Aussies and of course England? That's the question that remains to be answered. We'll find out tomorrow. I do think that the squad they announced tomorrow will be the squad on Sunday as well against Pakistan, most likely. We'll do it again. Thank you again.